But what's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and Apple's been pushing out updates one after another. So in this video, I thought I'd focus on the next one that's gonna be hitting us very soon, iOS 9.2. I'm gonna be doing a full review, and I know I've already talked about it, but I wanted to talk about some of the reasons why you should update, some of the reasons why you shouldn't. You know, mainly everything that's changed, is it worth updating to? That's the point of this video. So I actually haven't made a video about 9.2 beta 4 or beta 3 for two reasons, because nothing has changed there's really nothing to talk about. So in this video, let's just talk about iOS 9.2 as a whole and whether or not it's worth updating to. Now let's get one thing straight. I don't think this deserves the point to title. This is such a small and significant update. It would be better named as iOS 9.1.1. I mean, there's mostly bug fixes. There's a couple new features, but nothing significant and certainly not worthy of a point to update name. But I will be covering everything that's changed. And there is actually one new feature I haven't even shared with you guys yet. In iOS 9.2, to the main focus is bug fixes. iOS 9 overall has been a mess on the older devices and the larger devices. So iPhone 6 Plus and 6S Plus have been experiencing a lot of lag drops during animation. So when you bring up 3D Touch or go to the app switcher, you'd notice a lot of lag. And something that Apple has been focusing on with iOS 9.2 is fixing that. Now, before I get into performance, let's cover all of the changes. Now, this is the one I haven't shared with you guys yet. So if you actually go down to where profiles used to be, you'll notice that it's been re name to device management. So any profiles you may download in here, if you want to go ahead and trust them, you do have to go into device management. So it has been renamed. Two, iOS 9.2 focuses on the Safari View controller. Now what that means is basically the third-party Safari browser inside of third-party applications. If you're ever using an app from the App Store and you use the browser inside of it, you're not actually using Safari, you're using a watered-down version of Safari. Well, Apple's actually beefed up the features available in that third-party view in the Safari View controller, you can now hold on the refresh button just like you would in the regular Safari browser, and you can either request the desktop site or reload the page if you have content blockers enabled without those. Two, you can actually use third-party extensions, so if you have a, uh, any third-party ones in here, you'd be able to see them and use them in the Safari View controller. So good stuff, although I never use that, but it's probably a good idea to beef that up. And now there is Arabic support inside of Siri, so you can go ahead and enable that, and a new language has been added to Siri, which is great. A new one has been added as well is number sync for AT&T phones, meaning you can actually share and use your number with your computer without needing to be tethered to it. That means you can receive calls and texts and send them from your computer without needing to be tethered with your device, which is great. Although it's been removed from the beta, it's gonna make a reappearance again towards the end once we do see the final release of iOS 9.2. And lastly, there are some updates to the music application. These updates I don't really like but you can actually see which songs are on your device with this new little label right here, a little icon there, and it's you know better visible when you go in there, you'll see it right here. So it's a little check mark on a phone, basically letting you know that the phone is downloaded and available for offline streaming. The view over here for recently added is shrunk, which I don't really like. I like to get the most detail. I love this view right here. Uh, I don't see why Apple would do that. And overall, so basically when you go into this menu right here, you get some new options, delete from my music, instead of delete. So good stuff, some uh, minor changes to the music application. So mostly I'd say iOS 9.2 is an update to the lag and overall usability of iOS 9. Apple's making up for you know the bad release that we've seen with iOS 9 on older and larger devices. And I wanna go ahead and show you what I mean by that bad performance on the iPhone 6 Plus and 6S Plus. All right, so here's iOS 9.1. Let's go ahead and toggle the app switcher. So when I close it, notice how there is some stutter. It can be hard to see without a point of reference. That's why I'm gonna bring over iOS 9.2. So I'm gonna open up the app switcher on both, and when I actually close them, watch carefully. Did you notice that there was a, a huge stutter? The animations aren't at 60 frames per second on iOS 9.1 on the larger 6S Plus and 6 Plus devices, but it's been fixed on iOS 9.2. So when I close it, you'll notice how smoothly it scrolls to the left instead of just stuttering its way over to the left. And one last time, there you go. Also, same thing for 3D Touch. 60 frames per second animations were not available until iOS 9.2 when I close them, or when I activate 3D Touch, it's a lot smoother 
on the iOS 9.2 device. There's no stutter or lag. And the same thing can be said for older devices like the 4S. So same thing in the app switcher when I actually close out of it, there's no lag. It's very smooth on 9.2, very, very smooth. I gotta give them that. They've made it so much more usable, especially going down into spotlight sometimes. <laughs> but getting into the app switcher on this guy can be a little stuttery as you can see right there. So when I close them, it's definitely smoother on 9.2. So usability wise, iOS 9.2 makes the experience a lot smoother. So things will be generally less laggy, less stuttery. And there's one last thing I wanted to talk about and that's Touch ID. With the iOS 9.1 update, I noticed that Touch ID went to crap like the read errors, I get them all the time now. It's not as accurate. I don't know what possibly could have happened, but it's definitely a little bit better in iOS 9.2. Now, these are both uh, empty, but generally iOS 9.2 seems to have a better accuracy when reading. I don't get as much false readings in iOS 9.2, so I wanna say if you were experiencing Touch ID problems in iOS 9.1, that has been remedied in iOS 9.2. All right, guys, so there you go. iOS 9.2, although it's not out just yet, it will be very soon, trust me on that. We're nearing the end of the developer stage. So we're gonna be seeing iOS 9.2 out in the wild very soon with a few new features, nothing major, but the smoothness, silkiness, I absolutely love it, especially on the 4S. Uh, older devices, you'll notice the most, but the larger ones, like the Plus models, you will notice that the animations are so much better, and that is definitely very welcome with 9.2. It's not a very large update, should be 9.1.1, but you know, whatever Apple gives us, I'll take, I'll download it, I'll update my iPhone because it'll run better in the end. So should you update to 9.2? Certainly, especially if you're experiencing issues with either animations or touch ID not being very accurate on iOS 9.1. So thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to update once it is out. I will have a full speed test comparison uh, once iOS 9.2 drops with the official version, but rest assured it definitely is a lot faster than iOS 9.1. Have a great day guys. Enjoy 9.2 when it drops. Peace.